why did I do this? Why did I come back? There was a reason I left, you know? And I'm looking at myself thinking, how did this happen? Why did you do this again? Now you got to go through this whole shit all over again to get out. When Don Jason left Scientology, he knew how the church would come after him. Comb the airports, bus stations, and hotels, track his credit cards, scour personnel files for clues. As church staffers in Clearwater fanned out to their posts one morning in 1996, Jason took to the back roads. Within days, he had set up a low-profile life in Atlanta. Within weeks, the threat of losing family connections brought him back to the church. He sought to make amends and follow the church's procedure for leaving. He reached out to Marty Rathbun for help. He came back and we did some sex checking and uh, began the process and discussed it with Miscavige and he said, I want the guy on the ship. Because if you go to the ship, it's the most secure place in the world because you turn your passport into the port captain. So even if you hop the ship in port, you can't get out of the country without a passport. Jason was the chief officer at the Flag Land Base in Clearwater, a top manager inside the church and a potential threat on the outside. Aboard Scientology's cruise ship, the Free Winds, Jason says he was under constant surveillance and not permitted to leave. For a time, his room was locked. He was assigned to a program of heavy manual labor. Jason soon decided he wanted no part of the regimen. He insisted on leaving the ship. The staff's answer, do the program. What I decided to do at that time was kind of go along with it. I'll go along with the program, I'll pretend I'm cooperating, and I'm going to figure out how to get off this ship. The more I looked at that hauser, I thought that actually is probably going to be my easiest way. I took a dowel, like a clothes hanger rod. I put the screws in there in between the PVC pipe so that it will roll, but it's not going to roll into my hands. And then I kind of made it a habit of doing the kind of the same routine every day. At lunchtime every day, I'd sit out at the same spot on the dock by the hauser so it looked like that's just what he does. I picked my moment, I had the day, I brought that tool, I kind of had it in my shorts, kind of down the side, and I did lunch like I had always done. We got to the island that I had planned to do it, and I was sitting up there in a position to go quickly over, and once it was time, I waited for the timing of the hauser to wherever I wanted it, and then when I jumped over, I kind of got on the, uh, the line with, with my legs, put my legs over on each side, I had my arms, then when I had one arm hooked, I pulled that rolling pin apparatus that I had made out, put it over like this, hooked it with my arm, dropped it down, and then went on down the line. And as I was going down that hauser, you know, like clockwork, here they come. I could see them coming down, or I could see them out of my corner of my right eye. Here comes security, three of them. So I went up and said, okay, I uh, knew this was going to happen. This was planned for. But I was making good speed, got down to the bottom. The last maybe four or five feet, I had to kind of crawl up that thing, get on the dock, pull myself up, get up to the cab, and I open up the door and start trying to talk to the guy, and they kind of catch me at that point because that's a couple seconds they catch up. They're trying to kind of keep me from not going into the cab. They're kind of blocking me from going to the cab. They're arguing with me. I'm saying I'm going. I'm talking to the cab driver. Is there an airport? Take me to an airport. They're telling them I can't, I shouldn't leave, I can't leave. I'm, I'm there on the ship's authority, that type of thing. And I basically, I'm, I'm pushing, the, pushing the guy off and I end up slamming the door in his hand. And I'm screaming at the cab driver. I eventually just turn to the cab driver and I tell the guy, I says, you know, I'm being held against my will. Take me to a goddamn airport. I get this call, Don Jason is on a plane heading for Atlanta because um, he escaped the free winds. To which I was, you know, shocked because how do you escape the free winds? You know, how do you get out of a Caribbean country without a passport? With nothing but a driver's license and some temporary checks from a Florida bank account, Jason managed to talk his way into a plane ticket and through customs. On the first leg of his journey to his mother's home in Milwaukee, Jason says he was hounded by an executive from Scientology's intelligence arm. Then on a layover, Marty Rathbun appeared. And I followed Dawn, he, had, he, he went down to the smoking lounge, went in there, lit up a smoke. Uh, I walked in and his jaw dropped because he next, last thing, he just got away from Ludwig and suddenly I was there. Come on back, come on back, you know, at this point we're not trying to keep you, you know. We don't, we don't want you on staff anymore. You're good, you can leave. 
but come on back to Clearwater and we will have you do a routing for him. In the process of having this conversation, you know, I realize that I'm missing my connecting flight. I realize what time it is. So I say, you know, time's up. I got to go. I gotta, and I started basically jogging to make my connecting flight. Marty was following me down there with me, kind of stride for stride. I give him my boarding pass. I get on the plane. And then at the last minute, he's like, Dave wants to talk to you. Dave wants to talk to you. He says, well, I don't want to talk to him. Turns around, heads up the airway to the plane. And again, Don thinks this is the end of it, right? Well, five minutes later, I get on the plane. And Don's like three quarters away back in the plane, and he's looking at some in-flight magazine and puts his head up and he sees me coming down thing and he gets I get the second jaw drop you know he's like you know it's like the Terminator the guy just keeps coming you know Rathbun went to Milwaukee the two negotiated a series of confessions and waivers that could be used against Jason should he decide to go public against the church Jason too wanted some assurance that his ordeal was over what do I have to do is that if I go to Alaska are you going to follow me? I said, where do I have to go? How far do I have to go? I'm not coming back. I'm not a church hater, but I'm not coming back. For TampaBay.com, this is Tom Tobin.